The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good one. <laughs> For once. Welcome in Thursday, December 1st. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Jason. Oh, man. And now the rest of the world can actually stop Be on board. Stop saying I'm a, you know, early early holiday or I don't know what they call me. They don't yeah. really call me anything. Early clause. Early clause. That's a good one. Um, I try to pay attention to when the like uh, big big media out there goes from like more uh, fall leave related mm-hmm. uh, graphics to the snowflakes to snowflakes and uh, you know wreaths and and bells yeah little jingle bells little jingle bells some uh, rain this is the month for reindeer like it's a big month for reindeer this is they don't really get a lot of attention the rest of the year but they do I mean they're around it's their only month this is the big month yeah for sure to celebrate the reindeer welcome in one and all today's show is is. Jam packed, never not working. News and notes, fantasy forecast starts the week. Boom boom kicker. Uh, I've been informed. What, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at boom boom kicker already. Oh great, yeah, great. So the saga, saga continues. I saga, saga, saga. Thank you. That was really uncomfortable. <laughs> what you just did to me and to uh, the hundreds of thousands of people listening. Saga. Yeah, I don't think that's right. No, it's definitely not right. Potato, potato. Yeah, uh, Mike isn't here. Still on the hunt. If you've seen him, please uh, dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. Let us know where you've spotted him. I looked all through my car, could not find him this morning. In the cracks and everything. Yep, in the trunk. Um, you know, uh, back seat couldn't nowhere under nowhere. the mats nowhere. Wheel well, didn't check there. Okay. Check there after. I've been told that the DFS pass is now 66% off since we are 66% of the way through the season. To be honest, we have not mentioned this nearly enough. We've left uh, Matthew Betts of the DFS podcast to shill it relentlessly on Twitter. But uh, I think it's like 10 bucks. So if you want to get in there, it's uh, I, hear, I hear Kyle. You got to jump on the microphone, Kyle, because you are part of the DFS podcast. Um and I heard you laughing. That's not a lot of money. No, ten dollars is uh it's what you guys think of us. No, I, I like it. I like <laughs> yeah. it a lot. I like yeah, how we, that has become a reflection of your worth. We think that the DFS pass is worth ten bucks. <laughs> it was, you know, twenty. We're like, we gotta move this down. Um honestly, th- th- these guys who have been doing the DFS pass have been crushing it. We have some prop betting in there. We have um, incredible FanDuel, DraftKings, whatever you're playing. It, it, the the info's great. People have been winning tons of money. People have been enjoying it. I use it. I use the tools and resources in there every single week. Um, it is phenomenal. And these guys have been begging us all year to change the price, like, way up. And we keep just <laughs> lowering it to where it's just it's dfs for the rest of us it's yeah. not dfs for for people like kyle with their you know hamptons mansions on the beach yeah dfs for brooks yeah i mean brooks would pay more brooks probably has to pay more because you don't carry any denominations below like a hundred right yeah i pay a lot more okay um but look i i took a poll this morning jason uh i asked a very simple question How have you enjoyed fantasy football this year I voted. Uh, absolutely yes at that, 28%. Is that you? That's me. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, somewhat yes is at 35%. Somewhat no at 13%. And misery and suffering is at 21%. Which Did you vote on your poll? Um, No, I didn't vote on my poll. Where, where, where would your vote land? Somewhat yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I but but what I'm saying is this DFS pass just target we're targeting the misery and suffering. If you need to move on from the pain, which maybe it's injuries, right? Like uh, maybe it's uh, the daily or the weekly sweat. Uh, you can hop into the DFS pass, check that out at dfspass.com, 
and um, you'll enjoy it. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow us over there. And the community is jointhefoot.com. Let's move on. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Very excited to hear from you and never not working here in a moment, Jason. But I, do you think we'll ever get to the point where we're selling it so cheap that we actually make bets and Kyle pay out to each subscriber uh, a little bit of their own I, money? I think there's too many subscribers for them to pay out to them. But if they would pay out to to us, that would be there's fine. three of us. And I think, you know, hey, you got a new subscriber, you owe me a dollar. Oh, that's a good new system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun for us. Uh what do we got here for Never Not Working today? So we, we wanted to take uh, – we're, we're heading towards the, the playoff weeks, the, the final you know six weeks of the season here, and we wanted to take inventory of rookie wide receivers who are out there, what is telling of what these rookie wide receivers have done in the past through the first 12 weeks versus the end of the year. You know, we've got Chris Olave, who's been a top 15 wide receiver. Garrett Wilson's had some absolute explosions. Christian Watson is now a touchdown machine. George Pickens, highlight waiting to happen. We've got some great rookie wide receivers out here. Um, had Wandale, had Sky Moore, had some other players making their mark on certain weeks. Absolutely. Have uh, Traylon Burks, who uh, could pop here at the end. And we wanted to take a look at every rookie wide receiver since 2014. That was, if you don't remember, that was the explosive rookie wide receiver year. The Odell Beckham, uh, Mike Evans, bunch of guys. And we took a look at how they performed some of the behind the scenes metrics what was their first 12 weeks versus the rest of the season yeah is there a boost at the end exactly so we have the outliers that's people in their rookie season who scored 12 fantasy points or more in their first 12 weeks those are the crazy of crazies jamar chase justin jefferson's we don't have any of those this year but we have that next tier just before elite and we took a look at that we've seen 27 rookie wide receivers who've averaged between 8 and 12 points through those first 12 weeks uh, this year, that's Olave, Wilson, Watson, and Pickens. They're all currently sitting right there. And 40% of them historically have jumped to the elite tier in the final month. So we want to say, well, what what do they have in common? What is, is there any predictive thing that says... Any indicators as to which ones might be exactly. the 40%. And one of the stats that we found, and we've talked about how predictive this stat is for other things, but we didn't use this stat back in 2014 and 15 and 16. This is kind of something, the targets per route run metric. That's something we've really looked at the last like three or four years. And when we look at how that affected these rookie wide receivers, there is some good correlation here. We see that wide receivers that average 23% targets per route run is a great gauge for a really good rookie wide receiver. Um, you have uh, Tyreek Hill made that jump back in his rookie season. He had a 31% targets per route run, and he went from 9 points to 12 points in the final part of the season. Uh, you have a bunch of players that made that jump who had great uh, targets per route run. Jalen Waddell just uh, last year and uh, A.J. Brown a couple years earlier. Most everyone who made the jump, uh, there's only one. Juju Smith-Schuster is the only player who was under 20% target per route run uh, in his rookie first 12 weeks who made the jump. So, so that's so the, made the leap from a, a solid week 1 through 12 to a, a higher tier, higher fantasy points per game week 13 through exactly. 17. So here's how that stacks up for the basic rookie wide receivers we're looking at. Chris Olave leads all rookies in this tier he has a 27% targets per route run, a 26% target share, only has three touchdowns. He's the guy that, to me, says the metrics say he should jump to elite as the end of this year goes, just like a lot of these other rookies since 2014 have. Garrett Wilson, since 2011, only seven rookies have multiple games with 90-plus yards and two touchdowns. Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, Mike Evans – Alan Hearns, Darius Slayton, A.J. Oh, Brown. Oh, Alan Hearns. And Garrett Wilson. And Wilson still has five more games to go and played a lot of these games without a quarterback. He had a Zach Wilson problem. So those two guys seem like they are going to pop. And even Christian Watson, he hasn't played a ton, but he has a 
uh, targets per route run. That is a great number that indicates he could pop in the rest of the season. Here's a downside player, a player that kind of is outside that model, the highlight machine, George Pickens. He has the lowest quality of targets. His targets per route run, 14.5%. So if I had to say whether or not he's going to jump to the elite tier of averaging 12 fantasy points per game over the rest of the season, I would bet against it. I would bet against it based on the history. Um, and then you have kind of the, the the last man standing. We've seen rookies go insane in the final month, um, and they, they kind of came out of nowhere. Amon Ross St. Brown, right? I mean, weeks one through 12 in his rookie season, which was last year, 5.7 fantasy points per game. And then in the final month, I mean, just went massive. That was with uh, DeAndre Swift and Hawkinson out, but obviously showed his talent. So of those players where their situation could change and they have talent, you got Traylon Burks, right? He's been injured most of the year. He's back. He's healthy. Maybe he pops off. Uh, Sky Moore, the opportunity is there. The last two weeks, 38% targets per route run. And I would just throw David Bell out there as well. A change at quarterback. Voldemort returning has five targets or more in three straight weeks. So to me, those a bit are, of a riddle. Yeah, a bit of a riddle out there. I like that. Um, those are the guys that could come out of nowhere as rookie wide receivers, and I would, you know, if if trade deadlines are open, or even if you're playing DFS or whatever you're doing, Chris Olave, or just start sit decisions, Garrett Wilson start sit decisions, um, and Christian Watson all look like they should have really strong finishes to this season. All right, well, you can get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo to see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Do we have word on whether the Rams have a full roster to field, or are they just given? Yeah, no, they have uh, open practice uh, on Tuesday, tryouts, open Try tryouts it. for the team, and then they're going to uh, just, you know, kind of... Go from there? Yeah, what was the, uh, what was that movie with... Uh, Tony Danza? Tony Danza. <laughs> the Philadelphia kicker yeah. movie? The yeah. garbage kicking, field goal kicking, Philadelphia phenomenon. There okay, it is. Well, well done, Kyle. <laughs> Bravo. Um, That's a lot of pressure. No, Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald are not going to be in this game. Yeah, or probably oh, most is that where Mike other is? games. Al, is that where Mike is? Is, is he, he trying, trying out, for, out, the out for the Rams? He is, yep. Hmm. Come on. They must not have seen me throw him a few passes in, in <laughs> practice. And have him break his thumb trying yeah. to catch a ball. Uh, Lamar Jackson. That's a true story. That is a true story. Left practice early for a treatment. Unavailable to reporters. Quad injury is what it's being reported as. Which is new. He had the hip injury he was dealing with last week, the quad injury this week, and hip has the bones connect to the quad bone. Oh no, the knee, the uh -oh. knee is next. Um, uh, I'm not putting that evil out there. I retract that. I take it back like a fishing line. Yeah. Um, stay healthy, Lamar. But Tony Dan's is so little. <laughs> I'm just seeing the cover of this garbage picking, field goal kicking, Philadelphia phenomenon movie. He's so little. That is the whole name of the. That's movie. the whole name. Yeah. Wow marketing wizards i'm guessing kyle watches that regularly is that a monthly thing for you in between mighty ducks 90s disney sports movies were spot on <laughs> they were pretty good pretty good uh yeah look, the lamar situation look he plays denver we had a long discussion was it yesterday on the it was show on the or party on, room the party room on spotify live just about how many different quarterbacks i'd like to play over lamar jackson this week and how lamar jackson is a bit of the Kyle Pitts at quarterback situation right now. There's been eight weeks in a row now where he's on 16 total touchdown pace. Receivers, the skill level right now in Baltimore, not great. Mark Andrews is even dropping passes. You kept playing Kyle Pitts because you know what he's capable of. People right now, are they keep playing Lamar Jackson because they know what he's capable of. Denver's not a good matchup. Now, he could be great. I've already had plenty of people scold me on the party room yesterday. He's going to dominate Denver. He's going for blah, 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 blah. I'm just looking at the last eight weeks, and it's a little bit – you mix it with injury. If you tell me Lamar Jackson can't run. Half of the last eight weeks, he has finished outside the top 12 at quarterback, and when he finishes inside the top 12 at quarterback, it is a low-end quarterback. He's only crossed 20 fantasy points twice since that week three number one finish. He has – 
One touchdown, one touchdown, one touchdown, zero, two, one, zero, one. Passing. Not a good. And I know we can make excuses with the drops, but, I mean, it is what it is at this it, point. Yeah, and, and obviously you're not starting anyone and everyone over Lamar Jackson. He's uh, But Goff I brought up, Jared Goff. I'd start Derek Carr. Trevor Lawrence is in contention this I would not, week. Yeah, I, I would not start Derek Carr, I do not believe. Oh, man, the Chargers. Uh, that one's really close to me. That was really, really close. I like the situation that the Raiders keep finding themselves in, which is coming back and having to go to the – they get an extra quarter every week lately. Uh, Jamar Chase officially limited in practice. It was very interesting listening to him talk about the injury with respect to coming back from it and acknowledging he doesn't really know how he's going to feel until he's on the field. And the way he talked about having some reps yeah. in this game. Yeah, he, he – specified he, he walked us through it was really cool um walked us through the injury process and and what was going on kind of behind the scenes the decision making and uh, how he played kind of through this and scored two touchdowns in a game but then that re-aggravated it and they want to be really careful and cautious um but he said that he wouldn't be practicing right now if there was any pain if there was any discomfort he, he's at 100 percent, but they're still being cautious he did say some reps, which is scary and frightening. Yeah, I'm not really excited this week about Jamar Chase. Do you, He's risky business. Do you put? I mean, it's against the Kansas City Chiefs and the highest over under of the week, the greatest pace of play game um, we've had in a while, certainly of this week. Do you start Jamar Chase on your fantasy roster if he is active, knowing that he could be limited to 15 snaps? At least he can. At least he can score one big play and make your day. So I think you have to draw the line someplace. But like I don't know, Garrett Wilson or Jamar Chase. I'm going to play Garrett Wilson this yeah, week. Yeah, me too. Um, so it, it's a tough one. He could surprise you. And and the one thing he did say in this long, transparent interview about the injury was that multiple times in this process, he, adrenaline literally fueled him through the remainder of games when he was hurt. And it does. I mean, we need to remember that. Like, we've talked about ankle sprains. Mm -hmm. People coming back into the game, playing, they're fine. Then they're out for a longer period of time. You know, Zeke came in. He played through an injury in the back half of the game. Jamar scored twice. That would tell you that, you know, maybe the, the, the fight with Kansas City gets him through the rest of that game and you, you could regret benching him. Um, it just depends on your options. Mike Williams still sidelined. Christian McCaffrey did not practice on Wednesday. That's something to monitor just because the knee irritation, I think, is how it was uh, discussed, and, and you just need to pay attention there. I would have been shocked if he practiced on Wednesday, but it's still not something you want to hear. And then tonight, Thursday Night Football, we did the preview on yesterday's show. Jacoby Myers expected to play. Damian Harris officially out. I think Pierre Strong Jr. is expected to get the remnant from he might Ramondre. Get, he might get two carries. He could get two to... Two and a half. Two to two. Carries. Very cheap cheap in showdown. DFS. If you need some Pierce Strong Jr. Oh, man. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. You know, you should listen to me in DFS. I should. No, yeah. I know you want a Millie Maker. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's all. That's all I got. But it lasts forever, doesn't it, Kyle? Well, maybe in tournaments, I'll listen to you. In yeah, cash, showdown. you can listen to me. Yeah. 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 All, All right. right. Sounds good. Go. Uh, wish I had been out of town last weekend and just left Jacobs in. That would have been nice. That would have been nice. Your team would have been great. <sighs> Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. I feel like that Jacob situation is the kind of outlier that will ruin fantasy players for about 10 other decisions. <laughs> it's like, generally speaking, with an injury late in the week, that type of situation, totally should avoid it. Yep. But then I can hear people saying, yeah, but look what Josh Jacobs did and justifying some starts. All right, lots of matchups this week. We do have a couple bye weeks. Uh, what is it? Arizona and Carolina. Carolina. Thank you. Pittsburgh, 4-7, and seven, taking on the 5-7 and seven Atlanta Falcons. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Atlanta minus one, over-unders 42 and a half. Look, this game, yeah, I agree. I mean, it looks ugly. Pittsburgh's defense, I think, is in play against Atlanta. Marcus Mariota and company, 
you know, not a huge threat. We have questions at running back for Pittsburgh. Najee didn't practice on Wednesday, but we know it's not a major injury. Jalen Warren came out, said he's expecting to play. <clears throat> Benny Snell showed out in his opportunity. McFarland being worked in. Do you have any uh, new kind of inclinations or convictions around the running back room compared to the, the waiver show? Um, well, the only change from the waiver show is I thought that this week uh, Benny Snell would be the better play than Jalen Warren if Najee was out. If Jalen Warren is practicing on full on Wednesday, this was a hamstring issue. If he makes it through full practices all week, I assume he's going to be good to go. He is just a better running back than Benny Snell. I know Benny Snell looked – good this last week but at the same time oh he mostly looks bad all the time yeah I uh, so I believe I would put Jalen Warren ahead of Benny Snell Najee you got to keep an eye on uh Matthew Betts our injury expert uh said he would be surprised if Najee plays with the oblique injury so it's too early to know right now with only the Wednesday practice report out if he is out I think Warren or Snell become a break glass in emergency play I'm not smashing them into lineups as a if both of those guys are active and Anthony McFarland might be mixed in I you know I don't think that it's um clear enough to just force one of those guys in you're saying if Najee's active I'm saying if Najee is out Jalen Warren and Benny Snell either one you could throw in your lineup but I'm not I'm not recommending like oh you've got to get them in there even though it's a good matchup against Atlanta yeah I'd be I'd be comfortable with Warren without Najee but what if Najee's active where's your confidence in Najee that he will get the majority of the work coming right back I do think if Najee's active he'll get the majority of work they're not going to have him be out there and be the backup so if I were to start one with Najee active it would be Najee and the the matchup is okay He's played through injury most of the year, but most of the year when he's played through injury, he's been nine fantasy points. You know, that's what I think you're going to get from him, nine or ten fantasy points. So hopefully you have better options. The Muth was not Luth last week. Went from 12 targets to, I believe, four. George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth are the passing offense for the Steelers and Kenny Pickett. He has a 1.1% touchdown rate so far this year. Fryermuth? Nope, Kenny Pickett. Okay. Yeah, yeah, can, that can, makes Kenny more Pickett, sense. and and it's just it's interesting because Kenny Pickett has not been he's not at a breakout incredible Herbert type of rookie year, but he's also not had a Zach Wilson, um, Justin Fields rookie year. He's been probably like if there's a scale of of good to bad, ten being great, one being bad. I think he's about a four, four to five, and so progression is in the cards for him. He looked okay last week. Is Pat Fryermuth still somebody that you put in the upper echelon of tight ends? Yeah, absolutely. Um, tight ends all suck. They all suck. If you're beyond Kelsey and Andrews, they suck. So you're going to start the guys that are talented, who are a part of the offense. Fryermuth or Hurst? Both uh, of them are very similar to me. I lean Hurst this week only because the over-under, the game script, and the matchup with Kansas City, I, I want assets in that game. And then Pickens, uh, always a threat to score. The targets have been up since the departure of Claypool, but if he doesn't score, that's where you'll be disappointed, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is a game with 42.5 point over-under, uh, Atlanta in the first half of the season was surprisingly scoring a lot of points last couple weeks. They have not put up that much offense. Uh, the Steelers defense has gotten a little bit better having Watt back. I, I just don't love the assets in this game. I mean, honestly, if you look it at seems like, like a slog of a game, yeah, you can start George Pickens. You can start whoever the running back one is for the Steelers. I don't think, and you can start Pat Fryermuth. I don't think any of those three positions are good or great starts this week. And then for the Falcons, it's pick your running back and check out. You're not throwing Drake London it's in Patter there. Yeah, it's Patterson too. Sure. I mean, Patterson is obviously the guy. Tyler Algier has been getting enough work and has looked decent enough to where an emergency start is there. But yeah, it's, it's Patterson and check out. All right, let's move on then. Let's talk about the Green Bay Packers taking on the Chicago Bears, a team that Aaron Rodgers has historically owned. 
Packers are four and eight. The Bears are three and nine. If the Bears win the game, they have the same record as the Packers. Oh, come on, Bears. Justin Fields limited on Wednesday. We could have Fields back. We could have Trevor Simeon. And uh, you've got David Montgomery with the majority of all the work in the backfield for Chicago that we feel pretty comfortable with. Packers, over the last six weeks, that defense is not getting it done. 27th against quarterbacks, 29th against running backs, 22nd against wide receivers. Um, really comfy with Montgomery this week. I love Montgomery. I think with, uh, you know, he's he's got the backfield completely to himself, and the Packers cannot stop the run right now at all, even when they know it's coming. The Bears, with Justin Fields, without Justin Fields, are going to run a ton. So David Montgomery is in my lineup. And then uh, when we look at the other pieces of this game, Darnell Mooney's out for the season. Chase Claypool. Are we going to start see, seeing an emergence of Chase Claypool in this offense? I, I don't think so. I'm five, not putting, five targets last week, but I'm not, just 40% of snaps. Yeah, I'm not putting him in my lineups. I mean, I'm, I'll keep an eye out, and I hope he does great things, but you can't just start Chase Claypool, who's done nothing, simply because Darnell Mooney is injured when you don't even know who the quarterback is right now. Anybody else you want to mess with on that Bears offense? No, I'm not going to Kokomo. Um, I'm playing David Montgomery and Justin Fields if he plays, and that is it. But the Packers side, the Packers side seems like there's some really good plays. What do you do with the wide receiver room? Christian Watson's number one to me. He's number one because of his explosiveness, his targets per route run, the fact that they drafted him to do what he is doing. He's on fire NBA Jam rules. So I don't see how you bench Christian Watson right now, not in this matchup against the Bears, who are terrible. Would you take a shot on Lazard after three bad weeks? No. I I mean, to say Lazard can't get a touchdown is ridiculous. He has probably better odds than a lot of the players we're going to talk about starting. Um, but Lazard has really succeeded when he's been the necessary option. You know, when, when Dobbs wasn't there and, and uh, uh, Christian Watson wasn't there and Cobb wasn't there, but now it looks like Dobbs could be back. He's practicing in limited fashion. Randall Cobb is back, and Christian Watson has emerged. So Alan Lazard, he's a flex option that you could throw in there and hope to get a touchdown. But but there's a lot of those, right? Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot in that category, right? That you could take rather, a shot on. I would rather have a high over under game that's got somebody else. Exactly. Aaron Jones. Oh yeah. AJ Dillon. Okay. Flex worthy AJ Dillon? Are you renewed in your hopes for Mister Quad Quadriceps? Uh, flex worthy, yeah. I mean, if you want to project a touchdown, you want a team that is favored. They are. You want a bad defense. The Bears are. AJ uh, Aaron Jones, I think, is a great play. AJ Dillon is just a flex option. All right, and then uh, Aaron Rodgers is he in play as a, as a streaming option? You're shaking your head. I, I don't think so. Even no. with this full complement of wide receivers in this game and a team he owns he owns the bears but he's coming off of a bad injury hasn't been good the majority of the season and while he could absolutely throw three efficient touchdowns um they could also just as easily run the touchdowns in against the bears have a lead and then not have to do much so i think there's better options this week all right let's take a quick break and we'll be back with the uh a more exciting matchup Jacksonville and Detroit, both teams four and seven. The DraftKings Sportsbook line in this game in Detroit, Jacksonville minus one. The over under is fifty one and a half. And this is two offenses that are pretty exciting for fantasy purposes. You have PPR monsters in recent history: Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Zay Jones with eleven catches last week. Christian Kirk's in play. You have Travis Etienne, who was limited, and the team expects to be back out there, who's been a staple in fantasy lineups. And then I think you have two running backs that you can play in Detroit this week. DeAndre Swift. Interesting. Yeah, very encouraged by the snaps rising, and more so my eyeballs. Eight targets last week. Yeah, in a PPR league, he's, he's definitely... He's getting a, more interesting. Yeah, it seemed like you had to 
kind of bench him, even though he was sneaking his way into fantasy relevance by getting a touchdown on limited touches. Um, his involvement has been there. I've I've looked at him in a couple DraftKings lineups for where he's priced and the fact that it's full PPR, and, and I, I don't hate that. I love this game. This is one of our three massive games this week. Um, great over-unders. You expect two bad defenses, and when Detroit is at home, and they can beat the other defense. We've seen it several times this year where you just get fantasy points from all over the place. Uh, I, Christian Kirk is a must start. Zay Jones is a great spot start. Evan Ingram was almost my start of the week. The matchup against the Lions is great. He has done nothing over the last several weeks, but he is out there. He you is know running around. How many rounds. times I've clicked him in our DFS? He's only three thousand. I mean, he's a. I, I, I've he, clicked him and then switched and then clicked him and then switched over and over again. In part because I like Zay Jones this week. Oh yeah. And the idea of having two of them from Jacksonville seems trepidatious. But no, you're right. I mean, the matchup: Lions thirtieth against tight ends. You know, we talked about Jared Goff, Lamar Jackson situation. Jared Goff at home is averaging two fifty eight and two and a half. So when you talk about the matchup where Jacksonville is the second best matchup for quarterbacks over the last six weeks. I think you need to throw the names away this week and go like Jared Goff should probably be my quarterback start of the week. Like, I think I'm going to pivot here on the show. Oh, whoa. I think I'm going to make the change. I think he needs it. I think he needs the, the pat on the booty. Well, then we shall have quite the quarterback off in this matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got Mr. Trevor and Trevor Lawrence has been much better than maybe you realize out there. Um, you know, multiple weeks inside the top 10, five out of the last six, I believe it's just been a very, very good run for Trevor Lawrence. And did you happen Did any of you guys catch that, uh, brief interview with their safety? Yes. It was awesome. It was so, uh, what it, would you call it? Just candid. It was so candid talking about how, or how, awful urban Meyer was and he this is one of their players saying that Trevor Lawrence basically didn't even get a rookie season that's right because of urban Meyer and said that when it comes to coach Peterson he would die for coach Peterson he loves that man yeah he said basically you know he feels so happy for Trevor Lawrence he was the quarterback four seven twelve eight and five his only bad performance since week six was against Denver which we all understand yeah I mean that's what Denver does but Three touchdowns last week. This is such a better year for Trevor Lawrence. It's hard to put it into words, really. Over the last six weeks, the Jaguars' defense for your Jared Goff start are the 31st ranked as far as most fantasy points given up to quarterback. The 32nd ranked is the Lions' defense across the field. This should be a phenomenal uh, bonanza of fantasy points. All the wide receivers need to be in. And I think you're going to start Travis Etienne. He's coming off an injury. And it is worth pointing out that in the beginning of the year, the Detroit Lions were the team to target. Like, you wanted to target them because you could run all over them. They've fixed that. You could pass all over them still. But they have – They've. you know, we were targeting them a couple of weeks ago with the Miami Dolphins. And they kind of shut the Miami Dolphins' run game down. And they're a good run, run D. A couple of weeks ago, Saquon looked like a smash play against Detroit. They – they shut him down. This isn't nobody's that they've been playing. So I think ETN is okay, but he isn't um, as exciting to me unless he gets it done in the passing game. Uh, Zay Jones is one of the most asked about players in the start sit tool as well. Players like Traylon Burks versus Zay Jones or Cortland Sutton versus Zay Jones. I do want to caution, like we should not expect 11 for 145 to be prescriptive. Like I was looking at ways I could get Christian Kirk into my DFS lineup this week instead of Zay Jones, who I think will be chased by everybody at 4,900. I, do you agree with that? Are you playing I, I Traylon Burks above Zay Jones or no? I, I certainly would rather have Christian Kirk than Zay Jones. Uh, the last, I think, two weeks, uh, Zay has out-targeted him. I don't think that's prescriptive. Christian Kirk is the, the better wide receiver, uh, is the obviously the better touchdown threat over the course of the season better for fantasy and uh, Evan Ingram has been silent the last couple of weeks in the target count he could very well come in and take the Zay Jones targets but I am starting Zay Jones over Traylon Burks because of this matchup because I I want the 
possibility of a 60 point game yeah yeah and that's probably not going to happen in the Tennessee Philadelphia game and I know we covered him but I just want to highlight a couple of stats on Trevor Lawrence this year compared to rookie season increased his completion percentage from 60 to 67 percent he's already thrown four more touchdowns than all of last year he's at 16 with six interceptions last year he was at 12 with 17 interceptions quarterback rating up is up over 22 points so Doug Peterson is, you know, doing the whisperer thing with Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, we just saw a video of Mike McDaniel and how he changed the mindset of Tung, uh, uh, Tua Tungavailoa with belief. And that's happening with Trevor Lawrence. And so I want to give him his due because I think he's going to be a popular breakout candidate for 2023. Yep. New York is 7-4. and four. They take on the 9-2 and two Minnesota Vikings. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Minnesota minus three. The over-under is 44 and a half. I am so excited for this game. This game is the sneaky one that I am like all – I'm going to be watching this one so closely from just a football fandom standpoint. So this is one of those games that I think on the surface would tempt me to push the almost upset button, but that's not my – that's not my feeling on this game. I think Minnesota is going to handle it um, fairly easily. We'll see. We'll see. They're three-point favorites. The over-under is 44.5. That gives the Jets just 20 points, uh, a little bit above that. Both of these teams, playoff teams right now, right? The Jets have a position above the Patriots who play on, uh, tonight. Mike White looked great last week. The defense for the Jets has been outstanding. They're number one against wide receivers over the past six weeks, number one on the year. So when you are looking beyond Justin Jefferson, maybe that gives you some hesitation about an Adam Thielen, especially yeah. with the target share that Mr. TJ Hawkinson is garnering. I am super excited to find out if the New York Jets defense is as real as they have seemed because they've been awesome. I mean, they have been one of the best defenses in the league. If you look, if you adjust for schedule, they're three against quarterbacks, seven against running backs, number one against wide receivers. You look at the last six weeks, they're just as good. But you have to have some intellectual honesty and say they have the had, schedule is pretty nice they have faced a lot of poor quarterbacks uh you know mac jones hasn't been great faced him twice uh they just faced chicago with a backup uh quarterback um you know they so if this you look is, at the good quarterbacks they've played they gave up 24 points to lamar jackson 27 to joe burrow four uh 17 to Tua, uh, seventeen to Josh Allen. So, yeah, I mean, it's it, you are playing. You know, Kirk Cousins is not in the Josh Allen tier. That's for sure. No, um, I you know, so I I do think that the Jets defense is for real, but this is going to be that test for them, and they're going to be up for it because the I mean, these are two of the best records in the NFL. They're going at it for uh, a lot of playoff implications on the line. So when it comes to fantasy assets and who you could start. Dalvin Cook doesn't need to be discussed because he's always going to be in, regardless of the matchup. Same with Justin Jefferson. Honestly, same with TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, for sure. TJ Hawkinson is maybe the third best tight end rest of season. And same with Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson without Zach Wilson is a must start, especially in half or full PPR. Michael Carter, you know, we don't expect him to be out there. They've made some roster adjustments with the practice squad that indicate they Bam! May... Oh, that frightened me. Mm -hmm. That was a little scary. Yeah. It's not going to be the last time that happens. I'm was talking that, about is it like an infomercial. Yeah, it was bam. like flavor call. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Zonovan Bam Knight uh, appears to be the first man up in the rotation. Uh, James Robinson was not active for this game, so there is, because of he's, for last game for last game because he's not a special teamer. But the coaching staff came out. They said really good things about Zonovan. They said he earned. That that he he played great, he looked great, and he earned a role. So I I expect him to be the uh, first option against the Vikings. Vikings are okay against the run; they are not good against the pass. Their secondary sucks. So Garrett Wilson is in. I'm not going to chase Elijah Moore's uh, two targets, but big play with a touchdown last week. But I wouldn't be surprised if he has a good game. What uh, Kyle is this a quote? I just want to make sure you weren't making this quote up from James Robinson. No, that was his quote, and actually he was informed last Wednesday that he would be inactive. So it was it was earlier in the week, too. So that could be souring pretty quick. They, they also came out and said Bam Knight has earned these opportunities. 
But James Robinson said, they brought me here for a reason, dot, dot, dot. Me not playing pisses me off. Maybe squeaky wheel. Maybe. That worked real well for Elijah Moore. Problem is he has a squeaky wheel. Right, yeah. An actual squeaky wheel. Yeah, and there's no oil for it. No. Mm -mm. It sucks. I mean, trust me, I'd love him to have success, but Zonovan Knight looks like a breath of fresh air in the backfield. Uh, Tyler Conklin, if you're desperate. Tyler Conklin, if you're desperate, yeah, he's 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 okay. And then Mike White is going to be. Um, uh, some people are going to try to take the glory play on Mike White. I think if you're in a two quarterback league, you're fine. I wouldn't get over hyped off of him beating the tarnation out of the Bears backup safeties and secondary options. I've moved away from like Lamar is going in above Mike White. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, we've seen flashes from him. This Minnesota defense throws you some different looks. They're nine and two for a reason. So, I think some turnovers might be in the cards for Mike White. Okay. I've never done a turnover guarantee, but I'm going with two. A two turnover guarantee. Okay. Yeah, for Mike White. Just for Mike White, not for the Jets. Yeah, just for Mike White. Oh. I think Mike Mike White turns the ball over twice. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay. All right. Washington. What a weird thing to say. Why do I need to throw that out there? Brooks is nodding like, why are you doing this? You this do what you want. I mean, honestly, this isn't you. You just say what you... Right, because I am. Uh, I have the site. You're just the medium. You're in between. Yeah, you brought that up, and I. if it goes wrong, it's not my fault. No, you just say what you see. Yeah. It's not I'm your just fault a, that I'm you've the been shown this. Yeah, you're the vessel. The vessel. <laughs> Don't uh, kill the messenger, you know? Yeah, I get these weird phone calls, and they say they got these stone-cold locks of the week. <laughs> And I just tell you what they say. Now, Washington is 7-5. and five. They take on the 7-4 and four New York Giants. Pretty important divisional matchup here. Over-under is just 40 points. DraftKings Sportsbook's line, uh, Sportsbook line is Washington minus 2.5. I'd be taking the under. I think this is going to be a just a battle back and forth between these defenses. Washington's defense is stepping up in a big way. Nothing the Giants are bringing to the table frightens me. So I don't think that well I don't think the Giants get to this mark. I I, I just think this game is going to be tough and it's sixteen in, to thirteen. Yeah, it's in New York too. So I think the the Giants defense will be solid. Um you know, Saquon, it's been rough. Uh we were talking about this a little bit yesterday. He was kind of a DFS lock early in the year. The last few weeks have been weird. Like, I mean, when you play Detroit and you go fifteen for twenty two. Or you go eleven for thirty nine against Dallas last week. It's been worse on the ground for Mr. Barkley, who was five point two in the first six weeks, three point six since then. Passing game doesn't have a lot of weapons. I don't know how complicated this matchup is for fantasy. It's really not very complicated at all. The um the Washington defense has been super good over the last six weeks. That means I don't want to throw Darius Slayton out there as a shot. Um, there's no tight end on the Giants side. I'm not throwing Daniel Jones in there this week. There's weeks to to play with him. It's Saquon Barkley, and that's it on the Giants side. There's more questions on the Manders side of the ball, but most of the questions I want to answer with no. Terry McLaurin did last week's disappointing performance uh, sour you on locking him into your lineup. I believe Mike said you need to cram him into your lineup last week? Um, n no, it, it, it certainly... No, are you going Jamar or McLaurin? Oh, that's a really good one. Gosh. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go Jamar there. Yeah, the, the game, I mean, you're talking about a game that could finish, you know, like I said, 16 to 13 versus a game that could finish 35 to... 28. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I don't blame you trying to take the shot at upside, but I don't. I do think you can start Terry McLaurin. His target market share has been unbelievable. He's going to be the one that is uh, targeted 31% with Heineke. So, yeah, he's in. Samuel's not. Dotson's not. Um, while the matchup is okay for Logan Thomas, and that's fine, it's really hard to say pick up this guy who's had like one or two good games on the course of the season, um, maybe a DFS dart throw. And then the running backs is really the big question because it's kind of been unpredictable. It, what might look like a Gibson week turns into um, uh, Brian Robinson. I think week. Robinson is a, a solid flex play this week just because of the foot injury to Gibson, the 42% of snaps last week. I would be staying away from Gibson right now. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I 
want to be able to answer the question with no. If you have other options, Pickens at running at back, flex or Brian Robinson in flex. I would play Pickens. Okay. Tennessee seven and four. They take on the ten and one Philadelphia Eagles. DraftKings Sportsbook line Philly minus four and a half. The over under it's forty four and a half. Games in Philadelphia. Uh, you have Derrick Henry going against the weakness of the Eagles, which mm -hmm. has been the running back position. 24th over the last six weeks, 23rd on the season. Derrick Henry has the second most rushing touchdown since week five. You are going to play Derrick Henry, and you are going to get enough. Yeah, you're going to really enjoy it. The Eagles are 29th in EPA per rush attempt allowed. Uh, they have not, especially since Jordan Davis has gone down to injury, um, I believe he was on the IR. I'm not sure when he's eligible to come back. Can you look that up, Kyle? They just opened the window for him for 21 days. Okay, so it's so it's possible he could be back this game, but we don't know yet. Um, uh, 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 that makes a big difference, but it makes no difference in your decision because you're starting Derrick Henry no matter what. I think he'll have a phenomenal game. Traylon Burks seems like a player people want to get into the lineups. The matchup is not ideal. But Traylon Burks does seem to be the focal point of the passing game. You know, we saw without him on the field that no one could really step up into that role. People wanted to sign Robert Woods. Mm -hmm. Then one week it's Westbrook Akine. Then another week it's somebody else, Austin Hooper, catching passes from Derrick Henry. I think Traylon Burks is in the flex category. He's in the flex category. Yeah, I, I agree with how you worded that. People want to play him. When you've got a rookie that was awesome, like he was my number two rookie wide receiver in the pre-draft process. I, I really believe in Traylon Burks' talent, and he comes back from his injury, and basically the first three games you get to see him involved in this offense since then, uh, barely involved in, in the first uh, week back and against Denver, but then last week the wide receiver 14, um, two weeks ago wide receiver 14, last week wide receiver 16, feels like, oh, man, arrow's pointing up, I want to get him in. If you just look at the box score and you don't realize – that his touchdown last week came from recovering a Derrick Henry fumble when he was going for like an 80-yard touchdown run and he just fumbled right before the end zone, then Traylon Burks fell on it. That's that's where a lot of his fantasy points came from. The week take, before, a lot came from a final play bomb down the sideline against Green Bay, too. Yeah, I, I still want to see a little bit more, and this matchup isn't the one where I feel the need to smash him in. So Burks, he's, Pickens. I would go... Burks. Okay. I do think that there's a, a good chance Philly gets a big enough lead where you've got a lot of the passing work taking place and, and Burks could be okay. Uh, A.J. Brown, play him. Devontae Smith, you need to monitor this. Groinindex.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah! My groin! You want really badly to be able to play Devontae Smith, and so if you can't, then A.J. Brown's going to take a lot oh, more of that work. Oh, revenge game. A.J. Brown against yeah, the Titans. Let's, I know. let's go. If he wasn't so expensive in DFS, I really wanted to get him in there. Um, Should be a really good week for A.J. Brown. Um, you, uh, you've obviously got Dallas Goddard out, and Devontae Smith uh, could be limited or could even miss the game. So A.J. Brown is in everybody's lineup. If Devontae Smith plays, I am going to to start him i realize that um there's some danger with the groin he was going to be my start of the week the matchup is groin great. dangers that's dangerous yeah uh the, the, he was going to be my start of the week the titans are basically giving up about 30 fantasy points per game to wide receivers and they're really good against the run which the eagles have been good at running the ball i don't think they're going to have as much success here against the titans so i think they're going to have to throw the ball i think they're going to be able to do it okay all right we have uh, any other decisions that you're looking at in this one? Miles Sanders, that's the tough matchup because Tennessee is so good against the run. He, you probably have to start him just because of how how decent he's been this year. What would you call it? <laughs> like, I wanted to say how good he's been. How about um, – He's the he's the running back 13 on the season. Active? Yeah. Involved? There, there you go. There you go. Active, involved. But, man, it does not project to be a great game for him. I, I'm I am fine. Like, if there's – um, you know, it, Jamal Williams. I would rather start Jamal Williams over Miles Sanders if that's like the option, the level of player that I could uh, pivot to. Okay. All right. Jalen Hurts, I think he's going to run a lot if Devontae Smith is out of this game. And then also if he's in, he's going to run a lot. Oh, that sounds great. 
Denver, 3-8, and eight, taking on the 7-4 and four Baltimore Ravens. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus 8. The over-under is 38 and a half. This is, I think, uh, a mess of a game. I yep. mean, 38 and a half is disgusting. The Denver defense is great. I, you know, I don't know if they are eventually going to run out of steam I emotionally. I, I do question, like, how can this team get up for playing and giving everything you have once your team is out of contention, the offense does nothing? I mean, we saw them give up 20-plus points to Carolina last week and scream at Russell Wilson on the sideline. Uh, so That's your hope if you are p playing Lamar or Mark Andrews is that this team is done. They're 3-8. and eight. And, uh, look, this offense is terrible. Playing Cortland Sutton is something you can do. Please don't watch the game. Just hope the stat line hits. Six yeah, catches, 54 he, yards, no touchdowns. That's what you're dreaming of. Yeah, I mean, he's he's good for 10 fantasy points right around there. You know, give or take a point and a half, that's what he's good. You know, eight and a half to 11 and a half fantasy points, that's his finish. Is there a point where you will feel very sad for Russell Wilson? Is there a point no. where you will grow mm -hmm. compassion? Never, never, because of two reasons. One, I spent the entirety before this year of Russell Wilson's career being an Arizona Cardinals fan, and he destroyed us and was an enemy. And then he's gone off the rocker, and he's just the weirdest of weirdos now. And so that makes him super unlikable, and he sucks. So I don't see how he <laughs> redeems himself. I don't. Did you see the the suit and slow mo thing he tweeted? These tone deaf tweets too. Oh yeah. He's I mean, don't walk clueless, in, man. Don't give me slow motion suit walking in the tunnel at three and eight. You're not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. Yeah. Uh, Latavius Murray though. Latavius Murray should get enough work to be a decent flex option, like a running Plus back. Plus, you love him. <laughs> oh, that's right. You that was a to, long time ago. You want ago. to Murray him. I love Latavius Murray. <laughs> wow, that was, that's was that got to be yeah. six years ago. Uh, we're out on the Dulcich right now. Yeah, I mean, look, this, this game is one that I would take the under on, and it starts at 38.5 points. You have two good defenses. The Baltimore Ravens haven't been putting up a bunch of points, and that's against any defense. The Denver Broncos can't put up a bunch of points unless Russell Wilson gets injured. So <clears throat> I I don't I don't see anything that I love in this matchup. Lamar's in. Uh, we talked about him. You can definitely bench him for a lot of other options, but he's in as far as a startable asset. Mark Andrews is locked in your lineup because he's one of the only two good tight ends in the world. And then you can you can play Sutton and Latavius Murray, but you don't have to. Yeah. That's it. I mean, yeah. this that game's going to be gross. Ranking starts at 2 on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Check it out. Starts time. Starts of the week. I've really, uh, I've really messed Kyle up because I've pivoted two starts in the last eight hours on Kyle. But I'm pivoting into Detroit Lions in both of those situations. I will go with Jared Garf. Jared Garf. He is going to be my start of the week this week. I mentioned the home splits, 258 and two and a half at home. Uh, Jaguars are a wonderful, wonderful matchup for the opposing quarterback. I, I think the home environment, the back and forth potential of this game, Lions home games. 62 total points per game, highest in the NFL. Oh, yes. Amon Ra getting it done last week. That's Let's great. go. Let's so, go. So uh, why don't I take the other side of the field for my start of the week, Trevor Lawrence. He has seven quarterback one performances on the year. That is more than Herbert or Cousins or Geno Smith. He is our top streaming quarterback of this week. He's in a plus matchup. Detroit is dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed. And we mentioned this on Tuesday. 38% of opposing passing attempts versus the Lions result in a first down or a touchdown. That's second highest in the NFL. And then my running back is in the same game. I am I'm going out on a limb here. I'm trying to get fantasy players to believe. DeAndre Swift is my start of the week against Jacksonville. Okay. 
I think he's in that perfect spot where this needs to be said because you're making decisions on DeAndre Swift this week. The snap counts are rising. The opportunities, eight targets. You did not see Jamal Williams with a target last week. I think the PPR leagues need to find a way to get Swift in there with that 62 total uh, average in Detroit for games in Detroit. Um, I, I think there's an opportunity here, and and you've seen other pass catching options be a focus uh, against Jacksonville. Eight targets for Jarek McKinnon, ten for Deion Jackson, eight for uh, Austin Eckler. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go out on the limb. I think I think he's getting healthier. My eyes tell me he looks a little bit more spry, Mr. Moore. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you can start DeAndre Swift. Now, would you start him over Jamal Williams? Or if you had those two and you could only fit one in your lineup, who are you starting? I can't do it over Jamal. No, Jamal's been too involved in his, the first up at the goal line. So I, I would agree with you there. But I also agree you can start Swift this week. My running back start of the week is David Montgomery. We talked about it earlier this episode with Khalil Herbert on IR. His opportunity has been wide open, handling 80% of the snaps and an elite 35% workload. That's the rate of the total team rushing attempts plus targets. Anything above 30 is an RB1 level. He's getting the work. Oh, and he plays the Packers, who just surrendered 364 rushing yards on Sunday night. Uh, since week four, Green Bay is 27th against fantasy running backs. So David Montgomery should have a good game either way. I do think he has a better game without Justin Fields, though. Keenan Allen is my wide receiver start of the week in another game that I'm super excited about the fantasy output of. Chargers, Raiders, 49 routes run, second most in the NFL last week. Just five for 49 and a touchdown on seven targets, but one of them was around the goal line. Uh, the involvement is going to increase with his health, and I love that. 49 routes out there, safe floor, averaging nine targets and six receptions against the Raiders. Raiders are 24th against fantasy wide receivers. Game total is 50 points. This is going to be a big week for Keenan Allen. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree completely. If you're in any kind of PPR league, he has to be uh, started. My wide receiver start of the week, I'm going to stay with my start of the week from last week, Garrett Wilson, uh, going to Minnesota. He was uh, my start last week, two touchdowns, finished as the wide receiver two. Uh, we profiled him earlier in the never not working. Let's just stay in the flames. In Mike White's first start, Wilson saw a 28.5% target share. He is emerging as an alpha. The matchup is wonderful. Minnesota is allowing the most passing yards per game and the second highest rate of 15-plus passing yard plays. Uh, if baby boy Wilson is on the sideline, Alpha Wilson is in my lineup. And I'm going to try to do you a favor in the dark, dark world of bad, bad tight ends. Hayden Hurst has been very involved, and he's my start of the week at tight end. I'm going to take my shot on Hayden Hurst in this matchup with Kansas City that looks to be a shootout. And, you know, Hayden Hurst is reliable enough. I mean, he's kind of like a Dalton Schultz light right now in Cincinnati. Kansas City started the year out as the defense you wanted to target for tight ends. So we'll see if he can get it done. Last week, very involved. Hayden Hurst, I think, is somebody you can get in there. And I'm going to call my shot on George Kittle. I think he has another up week this week against Miami. I've shared my concerns with him rest of season, but Debo's banged up. CMC is banged up. And this is one of those games Kyle Shanahan draws up a game plan around George Kittle. He's running around on 75% of San Francisco's dropbacks, which is an elite top five number. Uh, he's He's been ping-ponging back and forth between good games and bad games. But since week seven, the Dolphins, they're 31st. And schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to tight in slightly behind the Cardinals. And you can't play against the Cardinals this week because they're on bye. I think George Kittle has a really good output this week and is a top three tight end. All right, let's move on. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, Robbie Gould summoned the Megalodon and it ate a bunch of people and pooped them out. <clears throat> I sunk in utter panic, like the Titanic in the Atlantic, worried about my Boom Boom bloodline. Stunned, I was simply blutterbunged as I floated next to my buddy, Greg Zerlein.
Deucers. Yeah, I don't know that word. I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> and they all start with blutterbunged. Blutterbunged, uh, dumbfounded, confounded, and open-mouthed in amazement is the definition of blutterbunged. You know, if there's one thing about you, Jason, among the many, mm-hmm. you always find you need deep in like a, you know, dictionary. Oh, yeah. I mean, I it's just some casual reading for this guy. All right. Well, the story continues to uh, unfold. Well done. Thank you. We've got more matchups on tomorrow's episode of the podcast. We're going to help you out. Week 13. We were on Spotify Live yesterday. Had a lot of questions from the Foot Clan. And a lot of questions began with the sentence, I need to win this week to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know a lot's on the line. We're going to do our best for you. The Start Set Tools on the website. The community, 30,000 plus on Discord, the Discord community, they're there. You can share those uh, your, your sad moments. You can get help. It's a, it's a good group of people. That's why we play. Yeah, we even use it. Kyle was sharing with me today that the, uh, the DFS Discord channel, he – he will throw out some players that he likes and he's considering and he loves to see the Foot Clan discuss them and go back and forth and kind of tear them down and build them up. And this is a great community we have. The Foot Clan's undefeated. Thank you for joining us on today's show. Thank you to Jay Grizz for stepping up, stepping in. And the producers, I guess. I'll thank them too. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.